So before we get into talking about an open secret, I wanted to thank the sponsors of this video, Boss Play. They're uh, an escape room in Oceanside, California. They have two different escape rooms. The Chocolate Factory. Nope. Is it the Chocolate Factory? Yeah, the Chocolate Factory. Yeah. Well, that's right. I wanted to say the Chocolate P- Prohibition. That's definitely not right, right? I think we've talked about how that would be a disaster. That would be the worst. Uh, the Chocolate Factory and the Prohibition Ransom. Oh, my goodness. <clears throat> I used to be able to talk. Ransom. Sometimes I think my tongue is too big for my mouth. <laughs> I don't. I I believe it. Is that I don't know? Is that a thing? Is there is there a surgery that I can do um, to fix that? For you, I think it's a thing. I yeah. don't think it's a common thing. But uh, yeah, no. So Boss Play is awesome. You can check them out on their website, boss play dot com. That's way easier to say than saying www. I don't know why I always... Yeah, I don't know why you do that. As if there's any other option. HTTP it, slash slash colon www dot B-O-S-S dash P-L-A-Y dot C-O-M backslash backslash Taylor. I've seen that. I've seen that. But yeah, no. So seriously, they're awesome. They've been supporting our show for a long time. You should check them out. Taylor and Alan talking about movies. They may be best friends, but they always disagree. Taylor and Alan. I seen that. An open secret, Taylor. An open secret. This is the first time I've seen this, and it has ruined my day uh yeah i agree it's also it's not ideal no um so when we we did we're in the middle of doing the x-men series this this one was going to come out before that uh this will come out in the middle of fast and furious but we're in the future depending on when you're listening to this we are doing the x-men series and after we did the first x-men someone mentioned about uh, an open secret that it r- involves Brian Singer, who is the director of the first two X Men, and it's either Days of Future Past or First Class. I think it's Days of Future I Past. Think he does that one, and he did Apocalypse. Yeah, and is that it? Just those ones? Those four? I, he definitely did Days of Future Past. I'm not positive about Apocalypse, but. I th- this documentary kind of blew, like, I was going to say blew up his spot, but uh, it's a lot more serious than that. Kind of exposed him for possibly being a pedophile. I f- yeah, I feel like they didn't have that much focus on him. No. So it, it almost more like it's kind of just up in the air. Yeah. The- like, there was nothing concrete. The most damning evidence against Brian Singer was at the end when they said this guy is putting a lawsuit against him and three other guys. Yeah. Um, Other than that, they didn't really focus on him a ton other than he works with convicted uh, sex offenders. Right. And he (laughs) he worked for that. Gross. Sorry. Sorry. He worked for that production company. Yes. uh, Din. Din. That was weird. I didn't. I never heard of that before. Yeah, I didn't read that as Din any time that popped up because it was uh It was like a triangle. It was a more than sign E N, right? Yeah, it was weird. I always to me that was a C for some reason, maybe because I'm just dumb. But <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, had, what, what was your opinion? What was what do you think of uh, an open secret? Um, it's one of those things that it's just frustrating to watch because at the end you anticipate like this guy's in jail for this and this guy's in jail for that. And nope. They're all just still kind of doing the same thing. Yeah. So why doesn't anyone actually take it seriously? I don't understand. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, money. I, money is a big part of that. I think there. Yeah. But, but outside of Brian Singer, how many of these guys have you ever heard of? None. So how much money are they really bringing in? Probably a lot. I mean, if it, the whole thing is that there's like a pedophile ring in Hollywood, right? And so 
it's going to affect a lot of people up the chain. And those people up the chain have a lot of money to help the people at the bottom of the chain so it doesn't expose them. Yeah. You know, it's all like this weird, disgusting. Well, that's that's fine. The, the covering that's up fine. and, and whoa. Have, no, not whoa. Stuff. whoa, okay. I think we're done. I with guess this that podcast. there's a lot of people a lot of people <laughs> that are probably a part of it that don't want to be exposed. Yeah. And this and that. But as far as the people that are exposed, like why why continue to work with them? Yeah, well, like, th- I'm not saying don't like. Okay, yeah, no one's going after them, but why are they still getting jobs? Why, well, like they said in the documentary, Hollywood is very unregulated. There's like no yeah. one in charge of anything, and like you see with the Harvey Weinstein stuff that all came out, and just like it's just they ran their own kingdom. You know, they were able to do whatever they wanted. And people allowed it because they were getting things that they wanted personally. You know, they were sacrificing yeah. themselves <laughs> for their own gain in the long run. And like, it's so, you know, there's just not, I think the, the initial red flags that would get someone who would avoid getting trapped into something like this mm-hmm. are probably too small to actually do anything about it. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, and so if whoever did something, you know, something creepy and they're like, Hey, this isn't okay. We're going to expose you. And they're like, you can try, but who's going to care about, you know what I mean? Like me giving you a back rub or whatever. I don't, I don't know. Whatever it is. You know what I'm saying though? Yeah. Like, I think you, I think you either get way too far into it to where it's like almost impossible to get out or you realize the red flags right away, but you don't have any evidence to prove anything is was the yeah. point I was trying to make. Well, yeah. So <sighs> an open secret is all about these producers and photographers and directors getting yes. these young boys who are 12, 13, 14 years old and abusing them and holding their careers over their head being like if this is what you want you can't say anything to anyone and it gets yeah. super creepy and it's like very oh. yeah. it's it's a it's really well done it's a really good documentary but it is not fun at all to watch no not not at all um but one of the things so i i don't know I, there's not a ton that I have to say about pedophilia. I don't know where you're at with that. If there's anything. I've got articles and books on it. Yeah. That I've written personally, but go on. <laughs> um, uh, so the, like that's the majority of the documentary, but there's, I, for me, there's not a lot to say about that other than these guys are super creepy and it kind of ruins the X-Men, at least the Brian Singer movies for me. Like, yeah, just knowing and like it also makes you wonder like well what else you know is tainted by all this stuff i'm i'm probably sure if everything was completely uncovered every single movie would be ruined because it would have some kind of involvement from someone who's a pedophile yeah it would yeah yeah but the so the question i wanted to ask you is does that you know taint the art is if the artist is disgusting you know is a terrible person whatever does that taint the art that he made where's your line with that uh yeah i think it definitely does well hmm. i don't know yeah that's a hard question it, I mean, it, it it makes me not want to support, to support them. it, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. But I could go out and watch X Men, right? And it's not doing anything for Brian Singer. He's not he's not profiting anymore on me watching X Men. So you're so, saying pirate all pedophiles movies? Absolutely. <laughs> no, don't pay for them. Just pirate them. No, don't support yes. them. Yes. Although that's not a really good message because 
there's a lot of other people who are going to be affected by that. But yeah, I don't know. I, I struggle with it because for me, like even cause we're about to talk about X-Men two after we finish this mm-hmm. conversation. But like, I feel very deflated about even talking about that movie, knowing that Brian Singer's involved. And again, it's not confirmed that he is a pedophile or that he, you know, did all this stuff, but it's, based on this documentary and which was the documentary's point, which is something else. So I try to be aware of that. That can be manipulating in itself. Yeah. That has, you know, the documentary has kind of ruined my enjoyment of the X-Men franchise, at least again, what Brian Singer has done. And I don't know. I'm not quite sure if that's like, I think that's good. Right? I think that's the right response. But it doesn't change the art at all. You know what I'm saying? Like, finding out something about the artist doesn't change the art. It doesn't so, make a good movie into a bad movie. Yeah. So why why does our opinions change on it? I think it all comes down to the whole, you don't want to support. I, uh, I don't know. It's It's tough. I mean, you could... You could going forward not watch Brian Singer movies. Well, I don't know if he's even making movies anymore. I think. Oh, he he's making plenty of movies. He's doing, I was really bummed too because I was looking at his IMDb and he yeah. did the uh, he's doing that uh, Freddie Mercury movie that's coming out like in a couple weeks. Oh, with Rami Malik. Yeah, I was like, oh, I wanted to see that, and I don't know. I don't. I don't know. Yeah. Well, what what your what was your opinion about the guy who was an alcoholic at the end of the documentary, who got really sick and got hospitalized, almost died trying to detox? Did you feel like that fit into this documentary? It felt like a different documentary. Yeah. Right. Like. Like it was. I get that the point was everything was a that result ha- of that. Yeah, everything that happened drove him to drink, but it also kind of felt like an emotional manipulation tactic of like, look how yeah. how sad this guy's case is. But well, because they show you his parents and how they met, and then growing up, like <sighs> it it just felt like an additional punch without it fitting. You know what I'm saying, like. I think uh, I don't, I'm trying to figure out how to say this without it being insensitive or unfair. But I, for everything that happened to that guy and the alcoholism, it's probably fair to blame on that, right? But also, so. there is self responsibility that has to come with it, too. Right, you can't just put everything on the stuff that happened to you. You have to be responsible for your own actions at the same time. And so right. when that when that whole storyline came up in the documentary, it felt um, it just felt a little emotionally manipulative to me. Well, especially because I and maybe it's just me, and I don't know if you feel the same way, but it definitely up until almost the end there implied that he was dead. Right? Yes. Uh-huh. Okay, well, and they're like, "Oh, hold on now, this guy is still alive." Definitely not the the way it was pointed. Yeah, I think had the documentary been focused on his story the whole time, it maybe would have felt more natural. And then you go yeah. into everything else with all the pedophile stuff, and you, like you still make the same movie, but you make the focus on him. Then I think it would have felt less manipulative but it just felt kind of tacked on to this other documentary like you're saying it felt like two different things like Mm -hmm. they're i think they're both important stories and i think it's it is definitely connected obviously but the way they structured it felt a little off to me because they kept jumping back and forth yeah Uh, yeah i don't know it's I, yeah, I, I agree. It's it's a story that 
that that goes hand in hand with it. It just it didn't flow. Yeah. Together. But which uh, I, yeah, I mean maybe that's a hard thing to do, but I yeah. don't know. I mean, I don't know. I don't. I don't know how they could have done it differently, other than making it two different things. Yeah. Well, I think you'd have to. I think you'd have to recognize there's a need. There's a separation between the two things. You know, because they they heavily um, dramatize. Well, I don't. I, I feel bad talking about because the guy got. You know, the guy almost died. Right. He, yeah. He was in a coma for three days, and they brought him back, and he's you know, had a lot of issues because of all that stuff for his whole life since then. And I'm not, I'm not trying to downplay hit downplay his, you know, suffering from, you know, the abuse that he went through or, you know, the alcoholism and like, I'm not trying to take any of that away. It's just, it was the way the documentary used it as a, like a, just to, you know, again, just to manipulate you. To make you feel, yeah. you know, even more upset, which is, <laughs> I I feel like I'm contradicting myself and I'm struggling to <laughs> express how I actually feel about it, because it's rightfully so you should be upset about this thing, right? Rightfully so, this is a uh, you should the documentary filmmaker should say this is bad. Look at the effects. It's just the way they did it. Is like, oh, I feel like you missed the mark a little bit here. Yeah, but uh. The, I thought it was really, you know, really compelling when the guy got his uh, abuser to confess over the phone. I was gonna say it. It almost had like, uh, what was it? The jinx, the jinx vibe uh, to it. Yeah, no, is this documentary, while great, is really hard to watch. Um, it is. It's 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 uncomfortable for sure. But I don't know. Is Which it is any? Point, I guess. Yeah, anything else that you any other thoughts you have about this? Um No, I mean not not really no. other than it's just it's unfortunate that not only is it still going on but these guys are still allowed to to work in the business and who knows they they could still be doing stuff like this. You don't yeah. there's no there's no justice. Yeah, I think, well, I don't know. I was going to say, I think things are moving in a good direction. But obviously, yeah. that's not, you know, like if you went from the 50-yard line to the 49-yard line, you're moving in the right direction, but it's not like... Technically, yeah. It, it's not enough, right? But progress is good. You know, like, so, I don't know. It's such a complicated thing. Um I, I realized it when I started watching this. I was like, I, this is going to be a really hard thing to talk about on the podcast and be, yeah. you know, entertaining or not entertaining, but like just an enjoyable to talk about because it's so, it's just so dark, you know, and it's so upsetting. Um, And the whole, so there's, there's the whole thing with, with Corey Feldman, right? He's been on this yeah, pedophile ring for, for years. Yeah. But they just kind of make him. They they've kind of always just kind of made him sound crazy, like mm-hmm. a conspiracy theorist. Yeah. And then, I feel like this documentary kind of featured him a little bit, but they didn't really help his cause. No. Like, yeah, they didn't make him they, look good. Like they could have been like, "Look, this he's right. Like he's he's been trying to expose this for this long. Like he's yeah. not wrong." They kind of made him still seem. Well, I think over the top. I think he was a part of this documentary. I, I might be wrong about that. I yeah, I I wondered because it's it's like I said, it's what he's been talking about for years. But I, I think he's been his character has been assassinated so much that he's kind of an unreliable resource. Well, yeah, no one no one takes him seriously. And so the documentary, I don't think, wanted to focus on him very much because right. it w- kind of weakens their case, even though. You know, if what he's saying is a hundred percent true, it shouldn't. His his personality, his what people see him as, makes it harder to listen to. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I would say <clears throat> it's hard to recommend. Right, it's a hard documentary to recommend. It's very interesting. It's very upsetting. <sighs> it's dark, but it's well done. 
So if you're curious about it, definitely I check it out. It. Yeah, but it, like if you're if you're up for it, I definitely recommend it. Right? If you're yeah, up no, for yeah, yeah. looking into that darkness, if you're not, you could probably skip it. You know, you like don't. be you could probably read something on it. And yeah, be yeah, good. Yeah, but uh, I think I think that's good. I think we'll we'll wrap the conversation there, um, and uh, we'll. And that does it for this podcast. We're not doing this again. <laughs> Ever We're again. We're all done. The podcast. This, this was all leading up to this episode. We did it. Finished. We, we told our story. We're done. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we will. We're going to continue here on Twitch with our X2 conversation. But for the podcast, Blah. that will come out in a few weeks from now.